So if we were to draw a triangle, so draw a triangle, try to make it a bigger one because we're going to draw it inside of it. If you were to find the midpoint, so do we all remember what midpoint means? What does it mean? The middle. So I'm going to call this A and I'm going to call this B. So if A and B are midpoints, So that means A cuts that side in half, B cuts this side in half. The line that connects A and B, that line is called a mid-segment. So if you know that A and B are midpoints, the line that connects two midpoints of a triangle is called a mid-segment. So there's some special properties about a mid-segment and the main one we're going to look at today is the relationship between the mid-segment and, and the base. So I'm going to label those endpoints C and D. So when you look at A, B, and C, D is there any f relationship you see between them just by looking? They're parallel. That's one of our properties. We actually have a proof that can tell you that AB is parallel to CD. And what our theorem tells us is that any mid-segment is going to be parallel to the base. And we call the base the side that doesn't contain the midpoints. So these two sides of the triangle contain the midpoints. The third one is your base. Okay, there's another relationship, and this one might not be as easy to, to tell. They're parallel, they look parallel, and we can actually go about and prove it. But the second relationship in, that we're going to be using has to do with the length of AB compared to the length of CD. That relationship is if you were to take the mid-segment, so 2 times AB, it will equal your third side or your base CD. So there's this relationship that the mid-segment is double, or sorry, that the base is double your mid-segment. So if we were to take 2 times this line in the middle, I would get the length of this line down here. Okay, that's the real, this is the part of mid-segments that we're going to focus on today, is just playing with this relationship between um, the mid-segment and the other side. So any questions so far on mid-segment theorem or anything like that? This here, this relationship is the mid-segment theorem. That's pretty much what the theorem tells us, is that they're parallel and um, the mid-segment's two times, or the base is two times the mid-segment. So we're going to go through a few examples just playing with this relationship. So our first example, We're going to talk about triangle C B A And we're going to find BE 
if CB equals 11X minus 25 and CE equals 4X plus 1. And then I forgot to mark that these are midpoints. So the first thing that I look at is my relationship for the information I know. So I'm trying to figure out the length of BE. So this is BE, and I'm told that CB, this whole length, is 11x minus 25. So what's the relationship between BE and CB? It's half, because E is the midpoint. So I know that BE is equal to 1 half of CB. So I'm just going to write that down so I remember that. Now it also tells us that CE, this length here, is 4x plus 1. How does that help us figure out BE? BE is also 4x plus 1 because CE and BE are the same. So I can say this is also 4x plus 1. So how might we figure out x so that we can find the length of BE? 4x plus 1 times 2 equals um, x plus 25. OK. So if we take these and add them together, which is the same as multiplying by 2, because it's the same thing, we know that it has to equal 11x minus 25. So if we distribute the 2, move the 8x over, move the 25 over, we would get x is equal to 9. So then to go back and figure out what is BE, we would go back and plug 9 into our equation. So 4 times 9 plus 1. So 36 plus 1 is 37. <coughs> so BE would equal 37. So this was looking more at the relationship of a midpoint to a side. We're also going to have ones that will look at the mid-segment compared to the side. Like in this next one, again, I'm going to draw a triangle and label it R, S, T. it up? Yes, I can. Thank you for telling me. So here in number two, we are going to look at the relationship between the mid-segment and the base side. Yeah? When you mark like the little tick marks and stuff, mm -hmm. do you want us to put the little parallel arrows or no? You can if you want. It's not wrong to do that. 
the mainly what the tick marks are given to you so that you are that you know you have a mid segment. So those markings are what tell us that PQ is that mid segment, so that it has that relationship of half the base or the base is two times it. <clears throat> so we can use this relationship. So we know that if we were to take the base. It would have to, we would have to double the mid segment in order for them to equal. So again, we would say 2 times PQ equals our base of RT. That's using, this is using the mid segment theorem. Uh, here is what it would look like after we've plugged in the expressions. So we have our base, and we would have to take our mid segment times 2 to equal that base. Once you have it set up, we can distribute and solve. So 22x minus 6, 30x minus 14, minus 22x to both sides, and then add 14 to both sides. So we'll get 8 is equal to 8x. So x is equal to 1. And so for this one, if I asked you to figure out what is RT, what would RT equal? So we would go and plug that 1 back in for x. And 22 minus 6 would give us 16. So make sure when you guys are reading these that you read the directions to know if you whether you can stop at x or if you have to go and plug in to find the missing um, side length. Okay, any questions so far on those first two? Just using midpoint or using um, the mid-segment theorem to help you find an X or a missing side. Okay, there's one more I want to do with you guys and it's, a, it's another one that's find X and Y. So I need to flip the page. So for number three, go ahead and draw a triangle. And again, you're going to want to make sure you draw it kind of big. So here we're going to find X and Y. So I'll give you another moment to write down everything.
So, what do we know about EF? What kind of line is that? It's a mid-segment. So if EF is a mid-segment, then I know if I double it, it will equal CB. I also know that this side here with Y on it, that's also a mid-segment. And if I double it, it will equal BD. So to start us off, we're going to set up both of those equations. So the first one, if I take EF, the length of the mid-segment, and double it, it's going to equal 4x plus 6. That's my first equation. And then I also know that this side here with y on it, if I double it, it will equal BD. So which of those equations looks like one we can actually solve right away? The first one, because it has all the same letter. So if I distribute the two, and move the 4x, as well as the negative 10, we get 2x equals 16. So we would get that x is equal to 8. So once we know what x is, we can come down to our second equation, plug in what we found for x, and simplify to solve for y. And when we do that, we get y is 17. So that one was a little more involved with the amount of algebra we had to use. But it had, still was using that same idea that the mid-segment, if you double it, will equal that third side. Okay. There was one more that I did want to do with you because it's you only have like one or two questions on your homework about it. But I, I want to go over it real quick. Um, so go ahead and start by drawing another big triangle that we're going to write in. <coughs> yes. Good? Alright. So on this one, We need to find all of those letters based only off of knowing one degree measurement. Okay, so 180 minus 127, that will give us B. So if we were to subtract that, we would get 53 degrees. So we know B is 53 degrees, so I can write that in there. Okay, what's something else that might help us figure out some of these other angles? If we use this parallel idea, so the fact that we know this segment's a mid-segment because it's two midpoints connecting. I know that these two lines are parallel. So what kind of angles are A and B for parallel lines? They're corresponding angles because they're both below the parallel line on the left side of the transversal. 
So if B is 53, what does A have to be? A is also 53. All right, so let's see. What else might we be able to find? Any, any thoughts, Josh? Um, is 127 equal to B? So is this side parallel to this side? No. no. So maybe not quite. I think I have to tell you one more angle. Yeah. If what? Well, I don't want to tell you angle C. Then B and C I think I'm. I think I'm supposed to have. I think I forgot to label an angle. This is supposed to be 52. So let me tell you, that's 52. Sorry, I'm. I'm reading some handwritten notes, and I can't remember what information is supposed to be given versus not. That's my bad. Okay, so now if I told you that's 52, is there something else we could know? No, D, because those are corresponding angles. You have your parallel lines, and then 52 and D go together. And then how could we find E? 180 minus 52, and that would give us 128. So E would equal 128. And then how can we find C? Okay, if we add 52 and 53, that's 106. No, 105. Whoa. 105. So that would give us 75 degrees. So that would be C. Matt, where did we lose you? Why would you say 105? Because 52 plus 53 equals Okay, so you were trying to use that exterior angle theorem, right? Yeah. But is this shape a triangle? Oh, no. That's why that wouldn't work. If it was a triangle, then yes, it would work. Okay, so you, will ha you have like two questions that are using the parallel lines and knowing corresponding have to be congruent to help you find different things. So that's how we use the parallel part is to set up corresponding angles. Most of your assignment today is going to be more like one, two, and three using the mid-segment theorem or using the definition of a midpoint.